They need you right now. But when they don't, they'll cast you out. Before Heath Ledger picked up an Academy Award for his portrayal of the Joker in The Dark Knight, an award he would receive after his passing. Before Heath Ledger would star in Brokeback Mountain, A Knight's Tale, The Patriot, and 10 Things I Hate About You. Before Heath Ledger would father a child, Matilda, with his girlfriend and co-star, Michelle Williams. Before Heath Ledger died of an accidental prescription drug overdose that included painkillers, sleeping pills, and anti-anxiety medication in 2008, Heath Ledger had revealed to the New York Times that he had been taking Ambien following the production of I'm Not There as well as The Dark Knight as it treats short term insomnia. He spoke about his character The Joker stating, he is a psychopath, mass murdering, schizophrenic clown with zero empathy. This role as well as his busy work schedule and his personal life, well it was all taking its toll on the man. Former Joker actor Jack Nicholson, well he had this to say when he found out about Heath Ledger's passing. I warned him. Now growing up young Heath or Heathcliff, well he was painfully shot. His hobbies they included surfing, poetry, chess, as well as photography and directing, which are all, you know, solo acts that require a high level of concentration. Now he was a talented field hockey player and he could have had a career in that, but he opted instead to become a performer and he moved at the age of 17 from Perth to Sydney with nothing but 69 cents in his pocket. My name is Michael McCrudden, documenting the life and career of Heath Ledger prior to his passing, here for you on Before They Are Dead. Now a whole lot of you guys have requested this video, so I hope you enjoy it. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want me to document next. Also be sure to leave your condolences for Heath Ledger and his family down below. If there was going to be a movie title, what would you like the movie title of you and your career to be? I don't know. Maybe I wish I'd done that. Heath Ledger was born Heathcliff Andrew Ledger on April 4th, 1979 to mother Sally Ledger Bell, a French teacher, and father Kim Ledger, a race car driver and mining specialist. Heath grew up with his sister Catherine and the two of them were named after the main characters in Emily Bonte's Wuthering Heights. Now the family, clearly they are from Australia, but their ancestry is Irish, English, as well as Scottish, and young Heath growing up, well that kid had a pet kangaroo. Not bad, his mom had found it, gifted it to him. Talk about an Australian upbringing. Heath attended Marymount Primary School in Gooseberry Hill and later a private all boys school known as Guilford Grammar, where he had his first acting experience starring in a school production as Peter Pan at the age of 10. Now at home his parents knew that their young boy he loved to perform, so they actually had a box of costumes for him. In there there was a nurse's outfit that he would wear, which is kind of chilly because he would later wear that same uniform as the Joker. Heath's parents would divorce when he was only 10 years young. At the age of 11, they would divorce and they would both go on to remarry. From this, he has two half-sisters, Ashley Bell, as well as Olivia Ledger. But it was his biological sister that he would be closest to and the person in his life who would encourage him to make a career as an actor. Now, this was presumably an odd career for the young and introverted Heath. The kid would spend his time playing chess. He actually got really good at it. He competed at the national level and took home the junior world title in Australia when he was only 10. Out in Australia, it is compulsory in junior high to pick one of two electives, either cooking or drama. Now Heath, for him, the decision was easy. He signed up for the drama program, plus he couldn't see himself working in any kitchen. Now although he didn't receive any particular praise for his efforts, the boy loved what he was doing. Now outside of his drama class and chess, young Heath, he was also selected for the state U17 field hockey team and a lot of people were looking at him as an up and coming star. But then he came to a time in his life where he had to choose either athletics or performing and he decided to go with the discipline for which he was getting the least praise for. He landed his first gig as an extra on the film Clowning Around and later appeared in the TV series Ship to Shore. Now with this bit of experience, Heath decided that he was going to become an actor and move to Sydney, Australia. First he had to complete school so he fast forwarded through his studies, then all of a sudden his best friend growing up, Trevor DiCarlo, he decided yeah, I'll get in on the adventure. The two got into a car, they drove to Sydney, but when they got there, they only had 69 cents between them. Now having never attended a proper drama school and with no formal training, one would think it would be hard for Heath to land any work. But things weren't that bad. Heath auditioned for a TV show known as Sweat, which was documenting a bunch of Olympic hopefuls and he was offered one of two roles. He could play either a swimmer or a gay cyclist. Heath accepted the latter because he felt to really stand out as an actor, one had to accept unique roles that stood out from the bunch. Yes! He later appeared in Australia's most famous soap opera, Home and Away. He played a bad boy surfer who took advantage of a young girl's heart. I got the van again tonight. What do you think? Unbelievable. Thanks. 
Though the show producers of Home and Away, they wanted Heath Ledger's character to stick around. But Heath, he had already moved on and he was now on a new series known as Roar. This was a medieval fantasy, the series was nominated for several awards and was broadcast in the US on Fox, where it didn't do very well. At the age of 19, Heath decided to take a shot at the big time and he moved to Los Angeles. He then auditioned for the role of Max on Roswell and he was close to getting it. Although it was backed by Fox and they had just backed Roar and Roar didn't do so well. So they were like, maybe it's because of that guy. Probably not. But uh, yeah, I'd say totally not. But whatever, they didn't book him. Heath's big break in America came in 1999 where he played the bad boy role in 10 Things I Hate About You. During filming, he actually got into a relationship with his co-star Julia Stiles, but that's a love affair that would only last a couple months. Plus, he's totally out of our league, you know what I mean? Next up was The Patriot, followed by Monster's Ball, and then A Knight's Tale. This film established him as a leading man in Hollywood. This also landed him on People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People. And Julia Stiles, she didn't make the cut. See, he was too good for her. Mainstream opportunities were now landing in his lap. He was offered the role in 2002 Spider-Man to play Peter Parker, but he decided to turn it down. Instead, he wanted to work on independent films where he could play character roles. In 2005, he was in three films that were screened at the 2005 Venice Film Festival, The Brothers Grimm, Casanova, as well as Brokeback Mountain. of a cowboy who really sucked at fishing, well he picked up for himself a Best Actor of 2005 nod from all the critic associations. He also got himself a nomination from the Academy for Best Actor. It was on the set of Brokeback Mountain where he met actress Michelle Williams. The two began a whirlwind relationship and their daughter Matilda Rose was born on October 28, 2005 in New York City. But this was a time when there was a lot of unnecessary stress and pressure surrounding the young star. He wanted to reside in Australia but the paparazzi there, they were out of control. He also wanted to be with his girlfriend and his daughter so they decided to get an apartment in Brooklyn. And he tried to live a low key life but it just wasn't happening. Now Michelle Williams has since stated that when she was living with Heath, his health wasn't great. The man would never get a good night's sleep. His head would always be going and going. While filming the Bob Dylan biopic, I'm Not There, well his relationship to Michelle, it would collapse. Now Heath didn't take any time off to reflect. Instead he jumped into his next role, which would be the Joker on The Dark Knight. I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. Ta -da! Now director Christopher Nolan, he had Heath and Heath in mind for the role and when the two met up, well they saw eye to eye on the character. They talked about the anarchy, they talked about the chaos, and they talked about taking inspiration from the character of Alec in A Clockwork Orange. There was me. That is Alex and my three droogs. During production, Heath would apply his own makeup knowing that this would be what the Joker would do. Heath also directed both homemade videos made by the Joker in The Dark Knight to keep up with authenticity. Uh, it, was, it was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was the most fun I've had playing a character, hands down. But following production of this film, Heath's insomnia, it would reach new heights. The man would lay awake each and every night, lost in his own thoughts. He'd also jumped into his next project, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, and on the set, the co-star stated that he would relentlessly complain about his lack of sleep. Now, this was a very dark and wet set. A lot of the actors caught pneumonia so they had to take a break. Heath never complained about being sick but at this time he was on a whole ton of prescription medication. Heath returned home to New York City in January of 2008 and it is rumored that he would want to go out in public late at night to blow off some steam because he couldn't sleep so he would put on a mask. Then he'd approach attractive women and invite them back to his place just so he could um will kill some time. It was also rumored around this time that he was in an on and off again friendly relationship with Mary Kate Olsen. Then on January 22nd, 2008, Heath Ledger was found unconscious in his bed by his housekeeper, Teresa Solomon, and a masseuse, Diana Walsen. This all went down at his apartment in the Soho neighborhood of Manhattan. He was found unconscious on his bed, laying on his stomach. There were sleeping pills nearby. Following, um, well, following this, his body was transported back to Perth where it was cremated. The Dark Knight was released on July 18, 2008, and in 18 short days, it brought in as much as $400 million. Now, there was a lot of speculation surrounding if it was the character of the Joker that drove Heath Ledger a little insane. Well, Jack Nicholson, again, he had this to say. I warned him. Heath Ledger was awarded with the Golden Globe and an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his work on the film. As for the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, well, fellow actors Johnny Depp, Jude Law, and Colin Farrell, they would all step in to help, you know, complete the film. And the rest of the story, well, you guys know the story because this is 
before they were dead. Let me love you. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want to hear about next. Leave your condolences, your thoughts, and your prayers for the departed. You know where. And uh, I'll see you guys in another video.